This AI can solve Sudoku in seconds. Let's find out how. We all have that one friend or family member that's obsessed with the newspapers even though it's 2023. And I'm sure you've heard this person talk about how wrinkly their brain is for solving the daily puzzles. Well, I know at least I have, and the game my grandma loved was Sudoku. She was a massive fan and had a load of different books, guides, and maybe even merch too. Anyways, I never was good at Sudoku. I always would get too distracted or mess up halfway through only to find out at the end after I did it all in pen. So yeah, Sudoku, not my strong suit. However, me not being good at stuff may not come as a surprise to y'all. So in typical fashion, I made an AI to solve Sudoku puzzles for me. I still love technology, always and forever. In case you don't know the rules of Sudoku, there are three. First, you cannot have any repeating numbers horizontally. Second, you cannot have any repeating numbers vertically. And finally, you cannot have any repeating numbers inside the same box. The numbers all range between 1 through 9, and if this sounds simple, it's because it is. I think the main challenge of Sudoku comes from trying to manage 81 different numbers all at once. And if you try to do it all in your head, it's going to short circuit, causing for you to like and subscribe. There are strategies that some like to do where you write little subscripts in the squares of all the possible moves. However, if my math teacher couldn't get me to show work, what makes the New York Times think they're going to be any different? It's blank. Now that we know how Sudoku works, let's talk about the AI. Well, really, this is an algorithm, but before you click away, according to Miriam Webster, this still counts. The algorithm that we'll be using is a depth-first search, and unlike deep sea exploration, this depth-first is safe. Imagine that you're a kid again trying to solve a maze. You might navigate down one path of the maze only to find yourself at a dead end and then need to backtrack. Boom! What you just did is a depth-first search. So, how does this apply to Sudoku? Well, there might not be an easy answer to which tile needs which number at some board states, and then you're left with two options, to think logically or guess. A depth first search can be applied here so we'll take a snapshot of our board in case we choose the wrong number. That way later we can backtrack and choose a different option. Alright, let's now take a look at the AI. While not super flashy, I did put in some terminal logs so we'll be able to see what the dead ends may look like. My personal favorite is giving the algorithm a blank board and watching it fill it out from scratch. Awesome, now let's open up our IDEs and get into the code. To start, we're going to need three functions for each rules we discussed earlier. We'll need a function to find the available horizontal moves, a function to find the available vertical moves, and a function to find the available box moves. With these three functions, we can take their responses and find where each intersect to get all possible legal moves for a tile. After that, let's take this logic and apply it for every tile on the board. Perfect! Now that we have all the walls to our maze, we can make an agent to navigate it. To navigate our maze, we'll need a function called populate board with a possible move. This will allow for the board to update with only one move at a time. We only want one move because two tiles may share the same move and that could cause for duplicates in our board. Next, we'll need a function to let us know if we hit a dead end, which can be indicated by an empty tile on the board and having no possible moves. Congrats! Now that we have all the functions to navigate our board, all what's left to do is the depth first search, and that could be seen on screen now. Notice how there are three different options that we can have, a backtrack that brings us back to the start, a backtrack that brings us back to a previous state, and a guest state. And there you have it, you too can now solve any Sudoku puzzle with the code and logic we worked on. All what's left is the UI, however that can be found on my GitHub in the comments and descriptions below if you want to play around with it yourself. If you like this video, you should check out this other one and consider subscribing. Till next time friends!